Hey guys, welcome back, and today we're checking out another diode, the Atomstack P7M40. Is it the right diode for you? Let's take a look. Now, full disclosure, this unit was sent over for review. Everything I'm about to share, my thoughts and opinions are all my own. Our loyalty is to our audience and we wouldn't do anything to jeopardize that. To start, the Atomstack P7M40 is a little different than the last unit we reviewed in that this is much more portable. It's also much smaller. It's a cantilever design, meaning it's a little more open and basically that means it's supported from the one side and it overhangs the entire work area. While this is a review for the Atomstack P7M40, we will be comparing it to other lasers that we've taken a look at here on the channel, and in particular, in my case, the Per Year LaserStorm L5. I will say this makes it far faster to assemble, it's much less fiddly, and it probably only took me less than five minutes to actually assemble, even half paying attention and filming it. Uh, in receiving this diode, um, Everything was packaged well, shipped perfectly fine. Um, it does look like it took a couple of hits, and unfortunately the top of the diode, the acrylic, I'll picture, uh, did take a hit, and it did get cracked. However, it is perfectly functional. Now, moving on to assembly, everything went well. Uh, super fast to assemble, 5 to 10 minutes, 15 if you're going slow. Uh, there's only four main big pieces that you really need to put together and slap the belt on that isn't pre-assembled and you're off to the races. Be sure to follow the instructions on the belt though um, because that's where I find people will probably get tied up. Um, loosening up the belt tension um, will help get things put together much easier. The instructions were clear, no issues there. Everything came together as expected. Everything was labeled as it should. Someone definitely cared about the instructions on this one. The images also definitely helped, so if there's anything unclear about the instructions, the images kind of cleared that up. It came with focusing cards to be used as a measuring stick, just like the Per Gear, typical Allen keys and tools for assembly, extension legs for raising up the laser for taller objects to engrave, data and power cable so you can get it connected to power in your computer, a metal sheet to protect your engraved surface, no safety glasses on this one though. Generally I always recommend being more safe over any risks, so while it might be fine, maybe consider a set of laser safety glasses rated for the 445 wavelength. More protection wouldn't hurt, and I've heard eye replacements are hard to come by. Another thing this laser comes with that the Perger did not is also the thumbscrew style diode height adjustment. It does work with laser gerbil and light burn. I would recommend if you don't already have it. It is my preferred laser software personally to use light burn. If you already have a license, you can run multiple lasers with it. And if not, you can always try out the 30 day trial if you're not sure if it's for you or if you haven't used it before. And I think it's reasonable for such a powerful and well thought out piece of software. Give it a try. One benefit as part of the assembly, there's nothing to square up with this one since it's only supported by two legs. Unlike other diode lasers like the first one we uh, reviewed, the Pergear, where you have four corners and all four corners are connected to each other. If it's not squared up and all the sides aren't set even, you end up with an uneven engrave area and that can raise and lower the diode or lead to the diode not sitting or resting flush on the surface. And that can cause it to teeter-totter or tip back and forth. I felt like that didn't occur with this at all. At $329 MSRP and occasionally going on sale for a little under that, this falls right into the mid-range of our lineup at this time. This has a suggested max speed of 3000 millimeters a second, which is fairly common. This is of course going to vary from what you might see or actually use, as you need to adjust for material used and dot size as well. So you may average likely somewhere under 2200 millimeters a second in this case, to be more realistic when going for a desired mark. 
You'll need to adjust speed and compensate for available power on most machines too, so to be clear this isn't a knock against this machine, just a reality of using any laser when seeking a desirable marker cut. While this machine claims a power rating of 40 watts, that does not represent the actual laser power hitting the material, which is more realistically 5.5 watts in this case. This is more or less what we are seeing across the board. However, as we will talk about, this isn't telling of the whole story. Going back to the size, the work area is much smaller. Um, you're looking at a 200 by 200 millimeter work area, which is just shy of 7.9 inches. It's small. There's no getting around that. It's small, but you can pack a lot of detail in. The dot size is significantly smaller, which means you can get far better detail and resolution out of an image. Now, while both machines do have atom stack diodes, uh, the P7 does have what seems to be a, a slightly upgraded diode uh, from the start, and that's what is going to allow you to have a, a much tighter beam or dot size and allow for that higher resolution that we're going to talk about here. One of the materials that I like to use to test with is quarter inch birch plywood because it's readily available and it's cheap. And another one is cork hot plates. In testing, we were able to get much higher DPI out of the P7 diode than we were with the per gear. The per gear was much closer to the DPI that I run on my CO2 laser at 90 DPI. The P7 was able to reach well over 200. In some cases, 220 DPI. That's more than double the DPI of my 100 watt CO2 laser. Now having a tighter dot size like that will allow you to run higher DPI and will also allow you passively to have more dots per inch in a tighter line interval. And that's good for detail. Now it does mean you're going to spend a lot of time engraving, and that's okay. It's kind of to be expected with a diode, right? However, I do mean this to a little bit more of an extreme. While they both are diodes that I'm comparing here, the P7 is going to take a little longer than the per gear, for example, because of that dot size. And you have to run it at a tighter DPI, or you're going to end up with big gaps in your engraving. Kind of like a window blind effect. So with that noted, not a bad thing, just know what to expect in that with the higher detail, you're going to have to spend a little more time engraving. It's kind of the rule we live by as engravers. Now in mentioning DPI and dot size from a laser, if you want to learn more about that and some of the fundamental reasons why it works the way it works and why you can't just crank the DPI to 11 on every laser engraver, I'd encourage you to go back and watch Alex's episodes uh, on photo engraving parts one and two. They're focused on photos, but a lot of the fundamentals that you learn there about finding your dot size is going to make your engravings much better for everything. So those will be linked below. I encourage you to go check them out. Now we've seen this machine in action and I've had a good amount of seat time with it to get to know it. Would I recommend it? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Is it right for you? Let's talk about it. For me, the detail has been great. It's been easy to use, it was super easy to set up, portable, easy to pack away. If you keep the box, you have a carrying case. I like the idea of having something you can take one or more with you reasonably easily, whether you want to set it up as a stall at a trade show, or have a couple on small shelves. These units could do to sell some custom gifts on the fly, or maybe on a tight space and need to be able to pack it away and get it set up in a small footprint small apartment or something like that. Most things I would want to engrave with this kind of level of detail generally fit in the work area already, so although it's small, I think it's pretty functional. Honestly, I think it's a good balance. The benefit is you also get the portability with that, so I think it's a win-win. If it was bigger, that would be cool. Would that space get used all the time? Probably not. If the item is big enough where it's not going to fit in the workspace, there's a pretty good chance you can put the laser on top of it to engrave what you want onto the work area itself. Even if it doesn't fit in the work area, it'll probably work for you. What's nice is this machine also has limit switches and tilt safety, so if it falls off of what you're engraving and tips over, it's going to turn off, and the limit switches kind of help you from going out of bounds and making really unfortunate noises with your stepper motors. Now while this machine isn't the cheapest, it does offer great value and with all the features it offers, I think it's also a great beginner option as well, not just for intermediate or experts with the detail. If the points we talked about fit what you're looking for in a diode, I think it's a good fit and I think you should consider it. If not, there's lots of other options out there. Oftentimes as crafters, business people, hobbyists, 
we have different needs on what's important and what we need for doing what we want to do and what's important in the tools that we use. As we look at additional hardware and items in the future and do more reviews, what's important to you? What are you looking to accomplish? What kind of projects do you want to see? Are there any materials you want to try working with that you haven't or haven't had success with that you want us to try with you? Let us know. Leave a comment. If there is any specific hardware that you want us to take a look at or other products, Leave that in a comment too. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to take a look at other things. Give the video a thumbs up if you have found it helpful or want to see more in the future. Join us on Discord and Facebook if you're looking to learn and grow with us and the community. And of course, they're free to join. If you want to help and support the content that we do here, consider joining the LMA where you'll find extras such as bonus episodes of our podcast, Laser Source, parameter libraries to get you started and other like-minded individuals that love this community. That said, special thank you to the people who have supported us. It makes what we do possible and allows us to share with everyone to enjoy. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.